Hello, welcome. Today we're talking about shape. So in previous videos, we talked about ways to describe a distribution. And with quantitative data, that number or that quantity is actually distributed. So when we say a distribution, we just mean the way that it's, it falls out on a graph, how it's distributed on a graph. So we talked about four ways that you would describe a distribution. One of the ways was center, then we talked about variability, shape, and outliers. Today, specifically, we're gonna be talking about different descriptors for shape. And so when you're describing a distribution, what are some words or terms you would use for shape? Now, here's a histogram. Again, the distribution is just basically how it looks. How does the data fall out? So remember, this is a histogram because it's representing quantitative data. It is not a bar graph. Don't think it's a bar graph. Bar graphs are only for categorical data, remember. So here is our distribution. Now, what I usually do and what I like to do is I like to draw a curve around my distribution. And you have to just do it gently. You want to do an approximate. Now, what does that shape look like to you? I would describe that as kind of looking like a bell. And so we would describe this as being a bell-shaped distribution because it's symmetric. So the shape of the curve, it's equal on both sides and it only has one prominent peak. So this is one peak. So we would describe this as being bell-shaped and symmetric. Now, this one peak, because it only has one peak, that also can be described as unimodal. So this is a bell-shaped uh, distribution. It is called bell-shaped because it is symmetric and it is unimodal. So you don't have to say when you're describing something as being bell-shaped that it's unimodal and symmetric because in the definition of bell-shaped, those terms are in there. But essentially, unimodal means that it has one peak and symmetric means that the right and left hand sides are equal to each other. However, you'll notice as we continue on this video, you can have distributions that are unimodal and you can have them as symmetric, but they would not be bell shaped. But if you have something that is bell shaped, it is symmetric and it is unimodal. Now here's another distribution. It's still a histogram because we have a number line on the x-axis, but this time it's a different one. It's got a different measurement here. Now again, I like to, when I see these distributions, just so I can visualize it, I like to draw a curve around it. Now with this, you may notice that it has more of a drag on the left-hand side. So it still has one prominent peak, so I would call this unimodal, but I would not say that it is what we would consider to be symmetric because it has more observations on this left hand side than it does on the right hand side. So it is not symmetric, it's asymmetric and specifically we could describe the type of asymmetry here. So this is unimodal because it has one peak. It is not bell shaped because it is not symmetric. So I would describe this as having a skew to it. Specifically, it would be called left skewed because this is the left hand side and that's where the drag or the skewness is happening. Sometimes people would call this negatively skewed because it's on the negative or lower side of the distribution. But I think that left skewed is more intuitive because that's the direction of the skewness. So in the next one, we'll look at a different shape. So here, this is kind of a weird one, right? This has no peak to it, so it's not unimodal. It also doesn't really have any skewness because it's approximately the same on the right and the left. This is a unique graph that we would call uniform. Any idea why it's called uniform? Because it has uniform height. So this is a unique graph and actually has a different type of distribution if you're gonna do analysis on it. So it has symmetry, but it has no prominent peak. Um, and it has one fairly equal height to it, so we would call this uniform. So here is another distribution. This is still a histogram because remember that x-axis is a quantity. Even though it has frequencies, this is not a bar graph. Remember, bar graphs are only for categorical data. I'm gonna refer to that multiple times because it's a common mistake. Now again, we're gonna draw a curve around this distribution. Now you can see here, we still have one prominent peak, so we would call it unimodal. However, it is not symmetric, so we cannot describe it as being bell-shaped. Sometimes I will have it where students want to just kind of 
talk about one side of the curve and they'll say it's bell shaped and another thing. That's not, you can't do that. When you have a distribution, you describe it one way with one shape. So here, this is not bell shaped because it's not symmetric. So I know that it's skewed and specifically it's skewed on this side. That's where the tail or the drag is happening. And so we would call this right skewed because it's skewed on the right hand side. Again, sometimes people call this positively skewed because it's on the high end of the distribution, but I think that right skewed is more intuitive. So now we have one last histogram here. This is looking at hours of sleep. And one thing that I want to mention to y'all is you have to be gentle with your data. So approximately, this would be bell-shaped because it has an approximate symmetry. It has one prominent peak. So I would describe this as being bell-shaped. Uh, you can't just assume because the data that I've shown you has that kind of almost perfect bell-shaped that when you see bell-shaped distributions in real life data that it would be perfect. It's not. Sometimes it's going to have some drops and drags. You just want to look at overall symmetry and overall modality to be able to describe it as bell-shaped, right-skewed, left-skewed, uniform. And the last one that I want to talk about today that you sometimes will see when you're looking at different distributions is something called a bimodal distribution. So here, this is unimodal because it has one prominent peak. But if I were to add in and I had a second, um, essentially, group, sometimes I can have it and it will look like a two peak or you rise once and then fall and then rise a second time and fall, this would be a bimodal distribution. Now you wouldn't see it with something like typical sleep at night, but if you were using, let's say, uh, height measurements and you had males and females, you would probably have a bimodal distribution where females had one basic set of data where most females around a certain height would rise and fall and then males would kind of represent a second group. So sometimes when you have data and you have two distinct populations, you might see a bimodal distribution pop out, which is always interesting to see. Here, this is what that would look like. So in future videos, we'll talk about different numeric summaries for quantitative data or other things that you might find interesting.